Hello everyone, it's Amy and welcome back for part two of week 150 of Build Your Stash and Craft. Today we are going to do some Ebrew painting, which is marble painting. And so what we have is in order to have your water, now you can actually do this on water, but water moves very easily and that will move your pattern. This also will move, but not as not as much. So what I have in the pan here is three cups of water. Put it in a pan on your stove and bring it to a boil. Then put one heaping tablespoon of cornstarch in one eighth of a cup of water. And I will put the recipe for this below. And basically, it's the same as making gravy. You, you bring your water to a boil and then you put a heaping tablespoon of cornstarch into an eighth of a cup of water, stir that around until it turns liquid, and when your water is boiling, slowly pour it into the water, pour the cornstarch mixture into your three cups of boiling water, and whisk it, or keep it moving with a fork. Do not let it stop moving, or it will gel on the bottom. Keep it moving and keep it moving for somewhere between 30 seconds and a minute. Your water will thicken, just like gravy. Um, and so that is where you get a thicker water in order to put your paints on. Like I said, there are people that do it with with just water. Um, to me, that's, that's quite difficult, um, and this just works better. So this is three cups of water, thickened like gravy, with an eighth of a cup of water and one heaping tablespoon of cornstarch. Then we have our brushes that we made yesterday. Now, what I did, and I already did this, and I should have done it to show you, but um, I forgot. So um, this is the four pieces of yarn that we put together. And then all I did was set it on the table, and then I just combed it until it got fuzzy. Now, it's not going to stay like this when it gets wet. It's going to, you know, go all the way down like this. So this is four. And then I came back and I said, wait stick one piece in the middle of in the middle of your stick and this one I have also combed but that gives you just one piece right in the center but what I did with two of these is when they were dry I put a little bit more glue all the way around and then I put four around just like we did originally this way we have one in the middle with the four around the edges which gives us a little bit more of a point right in the center which is what you want because that point is what's going to drop your um that point is what's going to drop your ink into onto your water so i think that's going to this is going to be the best we're going to try the others but again this is one piece of thread right in the center like this and then once that starts to dry, then four pieces or yarn, four pieces of yarn around the edges a little bit shorter because those extra pieces help soak up more ink so you can use it longer. So, um, so we have our little brushes that we made. And I'm gonna, let's see, four, four. I actually wrote um, on, the, on the stick what these are so that when I use them, I could tell. So that's a four, this is a five, and this is a five. Okay, and there's two ones. And I have two of each one, each size, because um, you're gonna go back and forth with what you're gonna use those types of brushes for. Then we have our combs. This is the one that we made that's at three quarters of an inch. This is the one that I had already made that's at half an inch. And we have our paper that we prepared with our elm and my X is on the back side so I know that this top part is the part ooh, um, the top part is the part that I'm going to touch on my paint because the X is on the back and um, that lets us know that this is the side that has the elm on it the elm is what the paint really sticks to when you rinse it so we have that and then I have four colors of paint, and what I have done for my paint, I have um, Apple Barrel Multi-Surface Wild Grape, Apple Barrel Multi-Surface Spiced Berry, Apple Barrel Multi-Surface 
Clover Fields, and Apple Barrel Multi-Surface surface Nectarine. And what I did was I put in half water, half paint. And that's what I have here. The paint is in here. And what I do is I just fill this up so far on the side, and then I just put paint in it until it gets double that tall. And that's how I know I've got like half and half. A basic half and half now the one thing that you want to make sure that you do I have the other three already mixed up they're sitting right over there you want to make sure that you mix it well you don't want that paint the solid paint floating around in there and if you don't get it mixed well that's just that much less pigment that you're going to have to have make sure that you go around the edges and across your bottom and you really have to take your time doing this so that you get a really good mix. Now these are all multi-surface paints. When I did my test samples, um, I believe that it was just the Apple Barrel Craft Paint. It wasn't multi-surface. So I'm hoping that this comes out with a little bit more pigment um, so that, because the, the colors do come out quite light and it all depends on the amount of pigment you have. Now, if you have ink, um, you can use inks, but we don't have any ink in our stash, so we are going to use paint. And it still turns out pretty. It just turns out a little bit lighter than if you have inks or if you have a heavy pigmented paint. So, But I'm hoping that, the, that this multi-surface is a little heavier pigmented than the plain craft paint. And I believe that these are a dollar at Walmart. Um, when I got these um, was when we bought paint and they had them on clearance for 10 cents a piece. So I got one of every color. Um, so, but normally I believe the multi-surface is a dollar and the craft paint is 50 cents. I'm not positive. And I'm going to hope that because it's twice as much for the multi-surface that it actually has more pigment in it. Alrighty, so we're going to hope that this is good, and like I said, you just really want to make sure that they're mixed well. Um, don't put the lid on and shake it. I tried that last time, and what happens is it really foams, and it's hard to get rid of that foam, and you're putting pigment into that foam even if you scoop it all off, um, and that foam sucks into your brush and really does not let you get the color into your onto your surface, so don't shake them because that that was really bad. I mean, it wasn't even bubbles. It was foam and it did not work well. Alrighty, so I'm just gonna set this one right down here also. And wipe off my skewer. And if you think that they're getting a little bit thin, um, go ahead, you know, like if the water and the paint are separating, then go ahead and um, put a little bit more, or stir it a little bit more to keep it mixed together. Alrighty, and then we also have the ones that we made That we made like this and like I said um, after 10 minutes I just put that one on there and kind of held that together and set it down then it kind of came apart a little bit and I pushed it back together again it just takes a while for that glue to really dry and then these have dried overnight hasn't been quite 24 hours but it has been overnight now if you look at these if you were normally painting something you would say this one right here that's all really together is the best one Really, the ones that have the more bushiness on them, those ones actually shake off just a little bit better. So I'm going to choose the four that seem to be the most random, and that's what I'm going to use in my paints. And so what we're going to do, and they're not going to stand up in there because I have such long handles. I'm going to find a place to, I'm going to make a spot for myself. Right now I have the papers right over there. But these, I will just probably set them down on the table. The, uh, the last thing that I have is I just have a pan of water here. And this is so that after we pull our print off of here, we rinse it in the water. And that's why you need the elm because the elm holds the paint to the paper so that when we rinse it, the only thing that rinses off is the top part, which is part of your, your surface of your cornstarch mixture. Okay, so now I have to sit down. So hopefully this is in shot because I can't see anymore. And all you're gonna do, the easiest, I'm gonna show you the easiest one first, 
and that is just take some of your paint. Now, if you pick up your brush and it's got a bunch of, of solid paint on the bottom because maybe your paint settled, you don't want that because you want this watery, you want this really watery paint. And then what you're gonna do is you're just going to just kind of flick it on your finger. And it's gonna spread out and that's exactly what you're looking to happen. Maybe we'll do one more of that color. And just really light flicks when you're starting. You'd want to make sure that you protect your whole surface. So right now, over here, I have a newspaper standing up because my light um, that I use for filming is covered with little specks of paint because the last time I did it, I never thought about it and it's just covered so I have my my floor is covered also and my table so just make sure I'm just changing to purple now just make sure that you have all your surfaces around covered so that you don't get this paint all over the place and what happens is you want the paint to sit on the top of the water and then I'm going to go for the green. Now my green has got paint in it, so first off I'm going to kind of just mix it around. And then I'm going to check and get that paint off of my brush because I don't want that paint on there. I want painty water on my brush, and that is all. Okay, I think that that's mixed up now, and it's just painty water now. So we'll put this one on here. And the more that you put on, um, the more it takes up the surface of your water and the more color you'll get on your paper. So, and I hope that you could hear me talking because I forgot that when I sit down, you can't hear as well. And then we'll do our last one is the yellow making sure that I don't have any paint paint on the bottom. And when you flick it like this, it does flick all over, so make sure that you're, you have your surfaces covered. And wherever you don't have paint, then those places on your paper will turn out white because they just won't get anything on them. Okay, and I'm going to add just a little bit more purple because I feel like I don't have enough of that. Okay, we have quite a bit of paint on here now. So what we're going to do, first thing, easiest thing to do is to comb. So we'll start with our three quarter of an inch one that we made yesterday. And this is wide enough to fit in my pan, but not too wide that it won't fit. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go right to the edge of this pan, to the edge of the pan over here. And I don't know if you can see this or not. Can you see the whole pan? Okay, not quite. Okay, I'm gonna go right up to the very edge of the pan over there, which will leave a little tiny gap over here. I'm gonna start right at the very end and very slowly just draw my comb across the paint like this. Then I'm going to slide my whole comb this way to the other side and go back. And that will put a line between the line that I just put on there. And let's see if that really is how it worked, yes. So, and actually now what I'm gonna do is I am gonna go right in the middle of the two lines that I can see and go back again. You wanna move slowly so that you don't mix your paint up too much. And then I'm going to come across like this. And it gives you the little dome shapes, which is really cool. 
And because this isn't long enough, I'm going to come to this end down here and do the same thing. Now, the more you do it, the more mixed up things get. So it's, you know, you just practice on what looks good, what works well. And then you're going to take your paper. Here's my X, so I know this is the back. You're going to get a hold of the two opposite corners. Hold it like this and let the center touch the water first. And then just go down with your corners. That's hopefully so that you don't get air bubbles underneath because if you get an air bubble underneath wherever that air bubble is, it will not pick up the paint. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these two corners right here and just drag them across. I'm going to move this over just a little bit. I'm going to drag these two corners across the edge of my pan and then I'm going to rinse it off in my water. So I'm going to grab these two corners, pick it up, and just drag it across the edge of my pan. This is what it looks like. And then I'm just going to put it in my water and give it a quick rinse off. And then what I normally do is I set it on two paper towels, bottom side on two paper towels, and then I just take another paper towel on the top and just put it on there flat and dry it off. So that is what our first one looks like. We've got some pretty good shapes in there going this way. And maybe the four colors was a little too, too much. Um, all of our colors seem to be turning out fairly bright. That's very nice because, so I'm thinking that the multi-surface paint does have a little bit more um, pigment to it. So now you say, well, that looks terrible. What you can do is, I'm just going to take another regular piece of paper because this is still paint over here that we didn't pick up and there's a little paint over there that we didn't pick up. This right here, that is now on the bottom. That's not going to do anything. And I'm going to show you, I'm just going to pick this up right here. Here's my X, so I know I've got my elm on the front. I'm going to put this on top. Do the same thing that we did before. And now you can see we do have paint on this edge. And there's a little bit here at the bottom that you can see. But now I'm going to rinse it off. And I will tell you, normally what I do is I run this underneath my kitchen sink. So see here we have the paint that I did pick up on this edge over here, but along the bottom there's really not much of anything. And the only thing that there was was I had pushed a little paint along the edge and then there was paint on the edge of my pan. And so I picked that up. So, um, so when you look at it and think, oh now I have to make another whole batch of this stuff because this has got color on it, you don't have to do that. And normally what you would do is just take another piece of paper, and it doesn't have to be your elm paper because you're not looking to save that pattern. And just kind of pick up, see now there's hardly nothing there, a little bit over here because we hadn't done that end yet. So that's that. Now, there are all different kinds of patterns that you can see on the... Um, on YouTube if you look up Ebru painting or marble painting and so I want to try I really want to try the fives first because I think they're going to work the best and I'm gonna have to do this one and then I'm gonna have to stop for a minute um, normally actually I would wet these down I don't have any oh yes I do have water here I'm gonna just in my rinse water I'm just gonna get those wet Okay, see now I've got them wet and see how they have a little point on them? And that point, that really good point, let me do the four really quick. Let me wet the four. Where's the four? Here's the four. Okay, and that one has a pretty good point too, but sometimes they wind up very, very flat. But um, the reason that I wetted them is because that way they'll, they'll soak up the paint better. 
um, by wetting them. And I'm going to do two really contrasting colors. I'm going to do purple and orange. And so what you do is you just put that in there, kind of rub it against the edge until it stops dripping. You don't want it dripping all over the place. And the purple one has a really long hair on it. I need to take that off because that is going to get in my way. Okay, I'm going to put my yellow back in there. See the mess I'm making? I'm making a huge mess here. And that is what this does. But I'm going to, I got my scissors here. I'm going to nip off that little, that little hair. There's a really long hair sticking there. And that hair is going to hit my surface first and mess things up. So I want that, I want that point on there, but I just want it to be a point, not a great big long hair. Let's pick that up again. Oh, and now I've really got the yellow saturated because I let it go all the way down in there. But that's okay. I am making a mess. Okay, and then what you're going to do, you have paint, you have the paint in your brush, and you're just going to touch it to the surface and then remove it. And then touch the next color just to the surface. And if it doesn't seem like there's enough getting on there, just go ahead and touch it again. If you want a little bit more of that color in there, and it moves the other colors out of the way. And if our, if our paints were a little bit thinner, I think this would work a little better. And I really need some more purple. I'm going to really stick it down in there to get that paint right up to the top of my brush. Whoops. And see, that's why you don't want to leave it dripping, because it's just dripping right on my surface. I'm going to move this out of my way. I don't want it to drip where I don't want it, see. Get some more yellow. And I do have to say that um, I think we need more water in our paint. Okay. Now, you, you can go much further to get this much bigger. But because I really need to stop the video before it doesn't let me upload. So then what you can do is you can take your skewer and come in from the outside to the center. Not moving too, too fast. That's the point. I'm going to try the fatter end doesn't really make much of a difference. We're going to just turn this kind of into a little bit of a flower. And there we go. Now we're going to take our paper. Make sure that I've got my X up. Hold it like this. And then take my paper, scrape it off the edge. And that's what it looks like. And 
I've rinsed it off and that's what it looks like. So the colors are very light, not as dark as it was with the other. And also by, I usually do rinse it under the sink, just run it under the tap. So maybe by putting it in the water and rubbing my hands across it, I'm pulling a little bit more of the color off. I'm not sure, but we'll let that one dry. And let me show you the first one as it's drying. Because compared comparatively, this one has a lot more color. And there's that one. So anyways, this is just, it's a really fun thing to do. I'm going to stop the video right here. I'm going to come back and we'll play a little bit more. I think I'm going to thin my paints down just a little bit. I think they're too thick. So two to one might not be, or one to one might not be quite right. Maybe a little bit more water than paint. So I'm going to be back in just a second and we'll play a little bit more. Okay, I'm back and we'll do a couple of more patterns. I've added some more water to our paint to make it about two parts water to one part paint instead of 50-50 and we'll see what this does. So, um, I, oh, and I'm gonna show you another pattern. Let's do green and yellow. And this is just like, just like the dot pattern. So instead of, um, Instead of doing the, the marbling, um, it comes up with just the dots of color. Now, the one thing is, too, is that, you know, you have to realize that it takes a while to fill up the top of your surface with the paint. So, you do have to make sure, got my two brushes stuck together, you have to make sure that, you know, that you have enough paint on your surface before you pull your print. And the more paint you get on it, the more you will start actually seeing the paint show up. When you first start putting it on there, it really blends in. And I'm very unlevel here. I can tell everything is kind of running to this side. So I'm just gonna do just these two colors. Let me go back and do some more green now that we're getting fuller. You can also, if you have little pipettes, you can drop your, your liquid on the surface with the pipettes. And now it looks like our color is getting filled in nicely. Remembering that the color that is down behind on the bottom of your liquid is not going to show up. So, you know, here where you see red and you see red here, that's not going to show up. You're only going to see the green and the yellow. So if you have gaps between the green and the yellow and you're seeing the red or when you first start you'll just see clear, um, then you have to remember that those spots are going to turn out white. And you might want to try and get a little color in those areas and get them to fill in a little bit. And it's hard to really do this on a video um, you know, especially a short video because, you know, time-wise, this is really something that you take down and really take, take your time when you get it all set up. Um, so trying to do a lot of this all on one video is, is making it not quite as nice as you can do it if you take your time. So I've got my paper here. There's my X. So I'm going to hold this up like this. it down on the surface just pull it across the edge and that's what it's looking like there but let's rinse it off and I did bring over a paper towel I'm going to set the back on the paper towel and then just take another paper towel and put it on top. I'm not rubbing it, I'm just patting it. Just to pat off the excess water. And 
this is what we have. Now the light's really kind of um, drowning it out a little bit, but again, we're not really heavily pigmented, so we're not getting really dark colors, but that it really does look pretty. And the green is not showing up too much, but it is showing up on the paper. And then you do have all the white spots where there was no there was no ink, but like this is a little white spot, and then this is green all around here. So even though it kind of looks like there's a lot of white on there, there's not as much as it looks like. So, and then another one that I think is really fun is um, like to make a heart. And to make a heart, let me just do, get that. Oh, you know what? The other thing is, is that when you're making just a pattern, put some color in the background before you make your pattern. If you wanna make a flower or something like that, um, go ahead and get some color in the background so that you don't just have the flower in the center of your paper and then the rest of your paper is just all plain. Get just a little bit more. And then we'll do the heart with the with the red. I don't want it to be dripping as I come across because I don't want it to just drip anywhere. But if it does, oh well, you know, it's not going to hurt anything. You're just going to have a red spot there. Okay, so I'm just going to... It does seem to be spreading out better. Now that I've thinned it out a little bit. So we know that we want to, I'm going to do another circle here need a little bit more paint I'm going to do one more smaller circle at the top and we'll see how this looks Now, because I've watered it down more, I think we're going to have less pigment. There we go. And then just take your skewer and just draw it through your through your circle. And that gives you a heart. Take a piece of paper. There's my X. And that's what it looks like. Let's see what happens when we rinse it. And I am drying it. And this is what it looks like. So that's kind of cool. We got a really dark spot on our paper here, and that could have to do with like maybe how much elm I got on the paper. But the background really looks pretty cool. Got the purple on there, and actually a little bit of green is showing through. So your your water will start to get a little bit of color to it as you go but it will only show up and I like that better as it gets you know a little color in it because then you don't otherwise this would all be white if this was a brand new water um, all the spots that look very light green which actually they look really dark green um, but they're not as dark as they look that's funny when it was darker it showed up white but that's what the hearts look like so that's pretty cool so those are just some techniques that you can use with this um, 
I think that we do have to have the paint just a little bit thinner. And let's just do one more um, with the combs and see with the thinner with the thinner paint um, how it marbles with the combs. So we'll just use all four colors like we did the first time. Or maybe we'll just use two. Sometimes the um, the more colors you get, the more it doesn't, you know, it doesn't show up as well. Your patterns don't show up as well. So we'll use yellow and green. We want to make sure that we get enough on the surface to actually have paint that's going to move when we comb through it. do a little bit more yellow and then we'll do a little bit more green just to make sure that we've got color on here and everything is getting covered with paint this is definitely not a project for someone who does not like a mess because it makes a mess but it's so fun to play with I think the bigger a mess something makes, the more fun it is. And that looks like that's probably enough. Try and get a little bit right here where I have some really big gaps. Okay. Now we'll try, let's see, this is our half inch comb. So I'm just going to comb it this way. And then move it over a little bit and comb back the other way. Let's not do that. Let's leave a large comb there and then go this way. And there we go. And then, grab our paper. There's my X. That's what it looks like. And I'm gonna quick rinse this under my sink and see if that makes a difference. And this is how this one turned out. Not very good at all. And do you know what I figured out as I was drying it? There's my X. I looked for my X. The X is the back, and I know that. But what did I do? I stuck the back in the water, and even though it held the paint, it did not hold the pattern. It allowed the paint to move. And so, our because we didn't have our elm side down. So, we'll try that one more time. I am going to have a piece of tissue paper here that I also did. Um, and I'm going to see if any of this picks up off the top because it looks like there's a lot left. I'm going to 
dry this off too. And that got a touch of color on it, but not much of anything. So I'm going to set that one aside. And we're going to try this one more time quick. And see if we use the elm side, if we can keep that, if we can keep that pattern. Because that really blended together a lot. And we lost our pattern. So, but I hope if you try this that you have fun with it. You know, it's just something to play with. You can buy kits for this. And if, if you try it and you think, I really like this, then maybe you can get a kit with all of the professional stuff in it. But it's just fun to do. The more you play with it, the easier it gets. The more time that you take with it, the better it turns out. Um, you know, it just, you know, it really is a matter of, of taking your time. I mean, even with this, you know, I'm I'm doing it very fast. The paint's hitting the water very fast. Maybe some of it's sinking and not sitting on the top like it should. Um, you know, because I had, you know, pretty good results before. And, you know, I've done this in the past also and had good results then. So, but not everyone turns out good either. You know, you, it's kind of like jelly printing. You know, you do it and you really don't know what you're going to get until you pull that print. And sometimes what you think is going to be really perfect turns out like, mm, I don't really like that one. So, got a big spot right there where I don't have any paint. As your, as your little drops, as you go through, as your droplets start not spreading out as much, that means that your surface is pretty covered. All right, let's try this one more time. And remember to just go slow. That is another key to getting a decent pattern, is not moving too fast. Okay, now let's see. There's my X. Make sure that the X stays on the top because that side is not elmed. It almost feels like it is. Hmm. Okay, well, here we go. that I'm going to quick take it and give it a rinse And here we go. It didn't blend as much, but it still doesn't have the pretty pattern like, like it was showing when we had it on here. So anyways, I just have to play with it and see how things turn out. So here's one that I made um, after we went off of here. And this was when I remembered I didn't show you like just the model look, but and to, to remember to tell you put something in the background, but I made the little hearts and everything. This one turned out really well, but I think part of it may be is I was just sitting here doing it and I wasn't trying to rush through it. And um, so it turned out maybe a little bit better. So I was just doing a double heart on that one. And so I gave it a little background of color, two drops of red, and then just drew through them. So 
But that's what we have. They didn't turn out really bad. So we've got those. And, you know, I'm going to um, stop the film right here. And then I will come back and I'll have these laid out and uh, tell you what we need for next week. One more quick pattern that I forgot to show you. And obviously I'm not putting it away while I've got it all out. So I'm going to play for a while. But I forgot to show you this. I have already just put all four colors on here just like um just like before but just a swirl um you know i'm just going to take this and just make a swirl and you know you can do it any you know any kind of a pattern no pattern and it makes kind of a really pretty feathery look and of course now i'm doing it really quickly and it's not going to look as well as it usually does but we're just going to go in here just put some swirls maybe one more right here and then lift that up because this is a really fun one to do is the swirls and it always usually looks pretty nice I'm going to I don't like this huge amount of red right here so I'm gonna put a swirl right in there okay, got my X on the back lift that up this is what it looks like and I'll be right back And this is the pattern that we get. So I think that that looks really cool. Our red again on this one has shown up a little dark. So that is either, you know, not enough elm, too much elm, or um, just there was a really dark spot of paint right there. But I do love the swirl and I wanted to make sure that I showed you that one because it's one of the easiest and one of the most effective um, patterns that you get with this. So now I'll be back in just a few. Okay, I am back, and I thought I would show you really quickly um, what we did today and a few that I made after I went off camera. So I made it a little closer so that you could see. And this one right here just goes to show you um, not to put your papers down too close to where you're splattering your paint because you'll wind up with splatters all over. But um, I think that that one turned out really, really pretty. And that one is the swirl. And then this one is just the blotches. And I really like the way that that one turned out. It's looking, let's see, it looks white right here, but it's actually orange. So it's washing out a little bit, but still I think you get the gist. So this is the one that I made with the hearts on it. That one was also off camera. This was the one with the comb, and neither one of these turned out. This was with the comb, and then this one was, I used the wrong side of the paper. And then this was the flower that we made. Again, it would have looked better if we had put a background behind it. And it did wash out a little bit. And then this was the first one that we made, which was also with the comb in all the different colors. And then off camera, I made this one. And I did some on tissue paper, because or um, typing paper, because typing paper is kind of see-through. And um, I just thought that that would be cool when I was doing my elm. I went ahead and I did some typing paper too because I ran out of copy paper. So this is just one that I did and this one is um, a swirl and this one is a splatter and this is on typing paper. This is also on splatter on typing paper and then there is the swirl. Love that one. And then here are a couple of flowers that I did. And that's on typing paper. This is another swirl with all four colors on typing paper. So, and then this was the swirl that I did when I remembered that um, 
I didn't show you how to do the swirl. This was the heart that we did together. And then these were some that I did. These were some of my practice ones that I had done. This one's a comb. Um, these are ones that I had done um, in my practice to get ready for the um, for the video. So I just thought that I would kind of show them to you, and so you could see different things that you can that you can accomplish. So I really like these and you know I'll be using these in different journals and that type of thing. This was after I dumped my water outside there were streaks of paint in it so I just stuck a piece of paper in there. Really liked how that turned out. And then these were ones that really didn't turn out. This was one where I wanted to see if it was going to pick up a bunch of color because my water was looking colored and it really didn't pick up anything. That one is a comb. And then this one is just drawing through it with the skewer. And that's just some more elm paper. And then there is just some little flowers. Um, I was trying to do a flower in the middle and I kept dripping all over the place. So I just turned all my drips into little flowers around the edges. And then this one is just the different, see, just not showing up very well. But this is just layer upon layer with yellow and pink. And the pink did not show up at all. And that is it. So, but I hope that you enjoyed this this process. I had fun doing it, and it's just, it's a fun thing to play with, just something different. And if you've ever been watching it, because it took me a long time to figure out how to do it, because I really, there's not a, there are, there are a lot of marbling videos, like showing you techniques, but there really aren't any that hardly show you, like I did find a video on, on treating the paper with the elm, and I did not find a paper on using the cornstarch for thickener, but I had heard somebody say starch for thickener, so I had originally done some with fabric starch, liquid fabric starch, and that worked also. But to me, I didn't want those chemicals, you know, like if I didn't have to, and I got to thinking about cornstarch. Then I saw somebody that did it with cornstarch because I looked it up, but they did it with solid cornstarch. That really didn't work for them at all because the paint just kind of sat right in its spot right on top. So, um, I just figured that since I had done the the process of figuring it all out, that some of you may be wanting to know how to do it, and so I thought I'd come on and show you how to do it. So um, what we're going to need for next week is, and this is going to be kind of close because I'm not going to raise the camera up, but we are going to buy $4 worth of uh, beads. So now I went to the... Uh, to my second hand store and I got this bag of beads there's a lot of beads in here for three dollars and then I got this bag of beads for 50 cents so um and the only thing when you're looking for beads at a second hand store make sure it's the kind of beads where they're actually on a string so if they're in there and you can't tell like the yellow ones I really couldn't tell I thought those might be just glued onto the string but if you just kind of try and pull them apart then you can see are they on a string or are they glued together I can see the string in there so because you want some that you can take them off the string and what I'll do between now and then is I'm going to build a little box to hold the different beads and um, and take these all off the string so then I just have a box of beads but for three dollars and fifty cents this is going to be a lot of beads so it's a good way to get beads or old necklaces that you have that are broken or if you know anybody ask them if they have any broken necklaces or ones they just don't want anymore and that will give you a great amount of beads otherwise you can go to Walmart and um, just buy four dollars worth of beads so we're going to spend four dollars on beads and we're going to need our strings and our twines and our embroidery flosses things like that which we have plenty of so we don't need to buy any and then from the Dollar Tree we're just going to pick up one of these fans like this with the plastic pieces on it like that and so that is what we are going to need for next week. We're going to need a fan, and we're going to need $4 worth of beads. So I hope that you enjoyed this week's video. I had fun playing with it, and I hope that if you try it, you have fun too. Thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it, and I hope that you all have an outstanding day. Bye-bye.